Well, I was going to do a tour of the shop here on video. Something I don't really do is make video. No freaking idea how to go about it. So I went to just grab my phone and make a quick video of my leather working shop. And just to show the method of creative building uh, bellows for the blacksmith here. It's forge bellows. Got that done. Went to deliver that and actually uh, slid on the ice. We have roads of solid ice here now in South Dakota. What the hell was I getting at? I don't know. Oh yeah, uh, why I'm not actually recording anything. Well, I uh, picked up my phone, went to record, remembered that it records this hideous audio has, plugged in the Zoom H1 recorder with a 3.5 millimeter audio cable, which normally works to record audio to the phone, to the headphone jack. Uh, that didn't work, it just gave me some sort of hideous gargling sounds. I uh, said screw it and decided to learn how to do screen capturing today, which is what I'm doing now. So I got my laptop running, I got the screen capture software running, which is OSB or OBS 22, which is open source free. <clears throat> instead of like the Camtasia I was looking at, which is I think 200 bucks. So instead of giving a tour of the leather working shop and going through all the tools and everything, I'm just going to be trying to solve another major problem I've got, which is uh, slipping and sliding on my bicycle. So I ride a bicycle exclusively here in South Dakota. I don't have a car, don't want one, expensive, freaking money pit. So I just ride a mountain bike that I got at Goodwill for 20 bucks. Problem is I can't get traction when we have freezing rain, which I hear is pretty common here. So today we're looking for studded bike tires. Studded bicycle tires. We want 26 inch tires for my mountain bike. You know, the problem I had before is they are, some of them are really expensive for a bike tire, 75 bucks per tire it looks like. Schwalbe, which is the, the brand of touring tires I want to run. 45 to 65, the Schwalbe Ice Spiker, 105, 77, 140, 73. Just expensive. So I'm looking to see if I can't find like a cheap one that'll just get me through this winter that I can just throw back on the shelf later. Oh, you winter 700 C no. So I've ridden I've ridden bikes in pretty much all conditions, except solid ice, which is what we have here now. Yeah, I've been avoiding buying studded tires as long as I can. <coughs> so we got 45 bucks. What size? Come on. 26 by 1, so got, what the hell is this? Difference in spacing, two different products. Okay, 45, 21. 48, 60, and 7 bucks shipping. Okay. <sighs> this is just a quick test video to figure out how to basically do screen capture and then uh, audio capture on separate devices and splice them together and line up the audio and actually for that I'll use uh, Sony Vegas Pro which I'll have to blur out some of the, the licensing information on I gotta remember to do that so any anything video editing seems to get really complicated and annoying really fast which I wasn't really expecting, but whatever. Like, uh, yeah, I don't even know where to begin explaining this to people. It's nice though, because you can you can speed video up pretty quick. So if I'm recording like a six-hour stint of me making something out of leather or doing yard work or riding bicycles or doing something like that, I can actually you can literally just hold control 
and click this line like at the end of a file and just drag it down to compress it. It'll speed it up up to four times. You can insert an envelope, velocity envelope, and then drag it up to add another 10 times. So you could speed it up 40 times if you want, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to have to use this program, put the video in, the video go in up here, take the audio file from the quarter, and I'll drop it in and line it up. Uh, once I get it lined up, yeah, it's simple as file, render as, and then you pick your formats. You'll end up with a video. And I'll actually have good audio instead of the crappy mic built into the laptop that's got the fan noise going for it. So, yeah. So I'm probably going to have to go with these. At $45 a tire, I'm going to need both. And with my luck, I'll probably only need them for... Mm, a couple of months. Actually, let's see. Let's see if we can't find a solution to do ourselves. Tire stud kit, DIY studs, DIY winter studded bike tires. Hmm. Stowtrails.org. 2016. There's a WordPress block. That's what I use. 2012. Interesting. So let's see what we got from a, a dot org. And we'll go check out some little guy's blog. I'm always on the lookout for marketing wanketeer. Wanketeering. This website actually doesn't look too bad. I don't think the ad blocker is enabled in guest mode. No hideous ads. Huh, this looks like a halfway decent website. Uh, oh, 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 here we go. We're a fat bike. I'm so freaking sick of this fat bike crap. They're awesome. I want one. I looked into it, but jeez. They, they add up fast. The tires can get expensive. Tubes, big, heavy. Let's see. Study tires are not a substitute for a fat bike. At best, they're barely passable. <sighs> Excuse me. It's not like trying to ride through beach sand, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a float. So it's for dirt roads, not single track, winter commuting. That's what I'm going to be doing. I don't do single track because I don't have a bike that will handle it. Measure twice, cut once. There's no actual cutting here, blah, blah, blah. Wear safety gear, don't care. I've got all that. Uh, let's see. Painful. Well, cordless drill, Phillips head bit for your drill, a few boxes, number six self tapping, pan head, sheet metal screws, half inch on the side lugs, duct tape. What the heck you need duct tape for? Mm -hmm. So you have to count your lugs, then do the math and space them out. Ooh, side lugs on the back, brush the frame. Not cool. <clears throat> I hadn't considered that, so I'm actually glad I'm reading this. To see if we can get this picture to load. Page off. No, so their image hosting is down. Awesome. Drill pilot holes from the outside in. You want to drill pilot holes. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm getting tired. It's oh wow, it's 11:22 p.m. But it doesn't matter because I only work part time these days, and I've got my leather working business. So I really I got Friday, Saturday, Sunday off every week, which I've never had a three day weekend since I started working about 11 day 11 years ago. Yeah, 11 days ago. Just screw all the studs in, inside out, prep tire. Okay, keep them from destroying your tubes. So we put a dab of caulk on each screw head. Two plus. With 300 on the yeah. Run a strip of duct tape over each line of screw heads. Okay, slice it down the middle. I'll fix those tube strips to the inside of the tire. 
more duct tape. So well, I've got two brand new cell sealing inner tubes I could put in. I could scrap the old tubes that are currently in it and use them for this. Okay, let's say when you actually go to install tubes, you're going to want to proceed with care, not just with tubes, you're install a thick set of work gloves. Okay. <coughs> Now you added 12 pounds of rotational weight to your bike. You're ready to start working on some of the winter gristle that accumulated about the midsection. Uh, keep in mind that if you run too much pressure in the tubes, you'll eventually flat. To, uh, you'll eventually flat to, so keep it south of 20 psi. Jeez. Well, do I really want to run 20 PSI with big metal spikes sticking out? Maybe. Uh, problem is, I might only need those a few days. Started tires like that. At least this is a legit tire that you could use every day, low rolling resistance, good name brand, winter compound. Well, let's see what we got. I've never used uh, studded tires on a bike before, so we'll see what we got. With half the amount of spikes, the winter provides excellent control on glassy ice. Hmm. Well, considering what I rode on was so slick you could barely walk. Hmm. Should probably get something a little more aggressive. Okay, so a line of studs down the center is not going to be good for cornering. Well, let's see. Those are tall. Flat edges on them. Flat top, sharp edges on a flat top. When you angle the tire to turn, once you slip off those studs, there's no corner lugs. Nope, you're gonna have to skip that one. Move the NW with a mountain ground studded tire, 26 by 1.9, 17. Use five stars. 105. 77. No gain in extreme. 290. 140. I'm sure that's per tire. Schwalbe Marathon Winter Tire. Mm. 70. 259. Kenda Klondike. I like Kenda. So we'll run that against this one here. Now I do tab browsing. I'll end up with like 20 tabs just floating across here. I gotta keep going and cleaning them up. So we have studs on the middle lugs. Compound. That's the tube I have. Self sealing slime tubes are actually pretty good. That's what I used when I was bicycle torn in one of these stupid things. Got it at Walmart for like, I think, seven, eight bucks. And I was riding around Cleveland, Ohio, downtown, and uh, I rode through just a huge pile of broken glass. Couldn't avoid it. Uh, I was riding in the street, which you kind of have to sometimes. I was riding on the edge of the street, and a car was passing me. And I was going too fast. The bike weighed about 100 pounds with all my gear. I was about 190. So I couldn't really stop it quick enough to avoid the glass. Couldn't go up over the curb. So I, just, I had to ride through a freaking pile of glass someone left for me in the cycling lane, which is always fun. I think I had six punctures in the back tire. And it went flat a few seconds after I went through that glass. So I had to pull over, strip the bike down, 
I had to take, uh, let's see, I had to take five different bags off of it right in front of just a, a crowded cafe, and like an internet cafe, a coffee house. Flip this thing over on a sidewalk, pull the tire apart, take the whole thing off, and pull all the glass out. I got the, you, you got to pull the tire off and carefully feel around. I put gloves on, I feel around on the inside for the glass, pop all the glass out of the tire. And then what you do with those tires is you, uh, you pump them back up real quick, get as much air in as you can and spin it real hard. And it flings all that, that slime, it's like a green rubbery seal and it flings it all to the outside edges of the tube. And the air pressure will push that crap out and then it'll go out through the holes in the tube up against the tire and it'll solidify. And then the more pressure you put in, the tighter it seals. So I was running my tires about, I think I used to run them like 80 PSI. So I actually rode on that inner tube with about six glass holes in it on one of those slime self-sealing tubes. Well, it was like 80 miles home. I never changed it. I probably put 400 miles on a tube with six holes in it, one of these slime. So yeah, those, they're heavy. If you're into racing, wouldn't recommend it. Run a tubeless with a sealant, but man, those things are freaking tough. Anyway, I've already got two of those. Those are my backup tubes. Uh, let's see. I don't really like to look at that Ken. Uh, let's see what the stud pattern looks like here. Oh, why is that so blurry? It's 2018. Can we not? What are they using? A potato vision? Hmm. So we got big, wide lugs. We've got the big spaces in between, which means that should be able to cut down into snow on solid ice. Those might actually be really good. Very similar to the Kendas, actually. Oh. Hey, I have those bags. I have four of those mounted on my bike. They're really nice. So this is 160 studs on a 26 point. 26 by 1.9, 1.95, slightly wider, 168 studs, rubber compound, jeez. Uh, Excuse me. <clears throat> well, I really don't know. I hate flames on shit, though. I don't like flames. If you put flames on your crap, I'm actually less likely to buy it. It's childish. Looks like this one's the tube was modified or something. I don't know. It looks like they took a decal off or did something. This doesn't look right. I can't zoom in on it. Yeah, that decal looks weird. 16 reviews, those are 70 bucks, 75 free shipping, I guess we'll look at the reviews, this one, one tire, blah, 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 tungsten carbide studs, okay, so I went a little skinny here, I was looking, I'm looking for a recommendation for a rim that these tires go on easier. Oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> Putting a tire on a bicycle is not that freaking hard, even if it's a tight fit. Oh my god, just get better tire irons. If, you're, if your tire tools can't handle a tight fit, then yeah, you probably have cheap crappy tools. Get a metal one from Park Tools or Aluminum Cheapo. You know what? I'm curious. Because I need some pretty sturdy tire levers too. Okay. Plastic. What is this? Three pieces. What is this? Amateur hour? 
We got action bubble on a tire lever. No thanks. Pedro's bicycle tire lever is one pair. 50 strong. That's a new brand I've been seeing at Walmart. Actually, doesn't look like doesn't look too bad. American made, I guess. Okay, high strength carbon steel bicycle cycle lever. Okay, that's a good one. Steel core levers, black, diamond back. Hard to go wrong with those. Hardened plastic, don't care. Schwabi. Eh. Park tool, steel core, so 19 bucks. Well. I don't like the shape of that. Steel core nylon levers, chamfer tips, spoke hooks. Yep, that's about as good as you'd ever, ever need. Looks like they might stick together magnetically or they got some pins. Okay, so yeah, 10 bucks. New rim will cost you like, geez, starting probably 50 bucks and then you gotta install it. Stupid. I always like reading these because people are just freaking weird. How good do these do in the winter? As far as skidding and sliding goes, rock solid all winter. Wisconsin, eh, yeah. They do have a fair amount of rolling friction. Duh. Hmm, <laughs> some of that friction might be due to other things like effective cold on the oil of the bike. And yeah, maybe. Didn't lose many if any stud. Two, two four mile journeys about four times a week. Well, that's not bad. A bit more than what I do, which is like 12 miles a week. Rolling resistance. Let's see. Let's do ice and hard pack snow. Unbelievably good. Ice and hard pack snow and always ways to the traction. Deep snow is tough. this mm, okay so you know what these look fine let's check a couple of reviews anything here winter now well k of asphalt riding without heavy accelerations or braking is recommended to set the stud. Boop. Hmm. Different colors have different number of studs. This computer generated image. What the hell? How hard is it to take a picture of one of your tires? Unless they're drop shipping. <laughs> okay, this might sound like a stupid question, but will the 28-inch tires fit on a 29-inch mountain bike rims? I've never heard of standard 28-inch rims. I have either. So if it's on a 29... Hmm. Yeah, this is my question. I can see some holes. What does it mean? No capitalization. How many studs are there? On the tire, I can see the studs, but also some should be holes. What does it mean? I think that's the wrong picture. That is the winter, not the marathon. When ordering on it, it's hard to know what you're getting. Oh, did not really hope this helped. Also, see if you can find the year the tire somehow. But no, it didn't. It did not help. It's got zero votes. I should download that. Kevlar, I don't care about that. Do, 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 do. Or that or again. They're slower than my slick tires, but not as slow as my bag. 
Hmm. You know, I was gonna run Schwalbe touring tires. And they've got a really good touring track record. So screw it. I'm gonna go with the Marathon Winter. Never heard of this brand. Actually, I think I have. I think they're pretty good. Kind of out of sketchy as frig. Okay, so that only took me. Wow, 25 minutes to decide on tire levers and tires. And I have to do this multiple times. Usually every couple of days I've got so many decisions to make. Getting ready to move from South Dakota back to Ohio. And I've got until like May to get everything ready. So I have to figure out how to ship my bicycle. I've got to pack all my clothes. I've got to start shipping things home, budget. I've got to pack up the leather shop and all the equipment that I've accumulated here. And it's just, it's a huge undertaking. But for now, I just got to be able to get to work and back every day and get go run grocery errands and can't really do that safely. So, Let's see price 70, what the hell is the actual price on this? To buy select size, okay. Ooh, 26 by two. 73 bucks. Let's see what two of those would come to. Taxes and all that. Yeah, whatever. Kurt. Quantity three. Why the fuck is there three in here? Stupid. Hundred and forty six bucks. That's a lot for a cheapskate like me. Jeez. Well, I guess let's check this. Shall we winter? Forty-five reflex. What the hell's the reflex? Oh my god! Reflex twenty-six by one point seven five. So these are skinnier. It's hit me about 50 bucks. So, yeah. I delete this. Got hmm. a couple of these. Check the shipping. Okay, qualifies for free shipping. Awesome. So, 90 instead of 150 almost. Okay. Well, I'm sure I bored everyone to death, so I'm gonna cut this off here. Um, I'm gonna be ordering a GoPro here soon. Maybe I'll actually pick one up tomorrow. And I will clean up the leather shop and start making some good videos. Uh, my last one, the only reason the audio was acceptable is because I sped it up like 40 times and you couldn't really hear the hissing. I tried some some software hiss removal and freaking hideous mess of everything. So for now, this is what I got. So I will see if I like this format of video and maybe I'll start incorporating some screen capture, funny things, stupid things, some of the shit I do. We'll see. I'm not comfortable with my voice or anything. So yeah, there's that. All right. Later.